Once again, I'm off across the country, this time, Colorado. Along with my good friend, Richard Pally, our first stop, Devil's Head. Our goal was to prospect for pegmatite pockets along the way to the peak of Devil's Head. And the scenery along the way was distracting, but who could complain? Unfortunately, we didn't find anything this day, but the day wasn't wasted because today we were able to acclimate to the elevation change and take in the awesome scenery. I'm uh, exposed to pegmatite up here on top of the hill. And all it means is that the individual grains of the granite, quartz, feldspar, and mica have gotten super enlarged. And if they have enough room, they'll actually crystallize. Um, show you a good example. You can see how the individual grains, the quartz is elongated and starting to have faces. The mica is getting big. The feldspar is getting big. And what you're hoping for is that you'll get into a part of this where it opens up and the crystals have had space to actually terminate. And if so, they'll start to look like this. This is a beat up one, but a, obviously a good crystal would have a point to it. Uh, my experience here is that if you're on something like this, you're gonna find nicer crystals. This actually is terminated. That had room to grow covered in iron oxide but it's definitely crystallized you see how nice and shiny that is yep so this is pine creek folks mother load <laughs> and actually it's a twin see so i don't know if it's a carlsbad or monobach isn't it pretty wow nice it's just laying out surface find huh? yeah the stuff i found down low was green nice and green yeah. all right all right, so I just pulled this beautiful quartz formation out. It looks like it's got a little fluoride on there, maybe. To get that identified, looks like maybe fluorite. Really neat structure. And after a soak in acid, it was pretty obvious. It was purple fluorite. Quartz formations were both very unique and aesthetic. My guess is that these formations are a result of an epitaxial intergrowth between the quartz and feldspar. Is that quartz? Yeah, it's it's wow. a it looks like it's facing up a little bit right here. Yeah, well, I'm gonna get in there because I think that's a, might be face too. Okay, then we'll see. All right, I'm gonna have to pull all this down to get to it. So the pegmatite that we were working here was a saprolite. Um, that's basically rotten rock, but that made things a lot easier to dig. You can see how it's just falling away with my fingertips there. Unfortunately, our day at Pine Creek was cut short for fear of being struck by lightning.
road too. Why didn't they take them around the yeah. side or something? You know, I guess they believe in that straight line. Straight up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Why go around about when you can be direct? That's right. And have more fun. The Blue Heaven Claim. <laughs> Hola, Roberto. Hola. Um, <laughs> we are looking for smoky quartz and amazonite. And so far, coming up the hillside here, it looks like I found my first piece. Looks like I found my first piece of nice green amazonite. Really cool. Luckily, some of these old tailing piles have been rained on a lot. And so I'm able to come over here and scan for some goodies that might have been skipped. Looks like maybe a little bit of Amazonite there. I just picked up this over here. Definitely some good signs. Not a whole crystal, but they were definitely into something good over here somewhere. Oh, look at that. Right on the top. Looks like a nice little smoky, and it looks like it's terminated. Yeah, that looks like it's contacted right there. All right, let's keep looking. So exploring further up the hill, I noticed that there was more outcropping of the granite and the pegmatite. So I decided to park here for a little while and see what I could find. Started to rake a little bit under here, break away the loosest, easiest part of the rock, just to see if I could find anything, and um, this guy came out. So, we'll see, hopefully it opens up. Alright, so I started to sweep my way to the left here, and I started finding a lot more crystals. So I think the vein might be somewhere up in this area. I'm going to try to proceed with caution here. But uh, a lot of these pieces have had... Uh, some nice crystals growing on them, so I think the vein is right in here, or the pocket, rather. So I started sifting through all that material that had fallen off of the pegmatite right there in front of me, and I started finding these nice crystallized plates. I found several of them there right in that area. Unfortunately, I never found the source or the pocket that these were coming from. Yep, look at that. Another one. So... I decided to dig right here, and lo and behold, check it out. Beautiful green Amazonite crystal. There is an elevated lead content in some microcline and that's what causes that nice bluish green to green color but there's also some indications that iron can be the cause of green in some microcline this is a really interesting piece of pegmatite i found it's got a really cool hexagonal uh, muscovite mica crystal there see it all stacked up there really cool all right here's some of my finds from this this little tailings pile here. Obviously, they were they were in a nice pegmatite vein with, that was crystallizing because all in this stuff I was finding lots of Amazon stone. This, of course, was my best find so far. All right, let's go see what Richard's doing. Hey, listen, listen to this. Got a lot of oxidization in it. We'll see. We this is a really neat spot Richard found. Yeah. 
but unfortunately we didn't find that pocket we were looking for. But that was it's been cooking. This one I think that went through too. See? Yep. It's a floater. And it's got a white cap on it, which see? Yeah. See the white cap? That's this side. Secondary growth? Yeah, this side is known for that. Okay. The more I began to explore the Blue Heaven claim, the more I realized how much Amazonite was within the pegmatites all around this mountain. Wow, that, that is nice. <laughs> Sweet. But I found a, a really nice, he brought the hydrofluoride again. A bigger, oh, yeah. Fluoride? Those are really neat. Anyway, there's the Kubrat. The Look at that. Oh. Fluoride. This, these little smokies. Oh, look at that. Nice. Hey yeah. That's anyway, cool. There's That's two beautiful. of them stuck together there. Wow. <laughs> Nice. Those are the beginnings of some really mm -hmm. nice pieces. I, oh, I'm yeah. thinking maybe we ought to consider digging that paragon. Oh, must, must have found something here. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Our theory was that these <laughs> smoky quartz crystals we were finding had long ago yep. eroded from the pocket where they came from. Because we were only finding these in the top nice. six inches of loose topsoil. Once we dug through the topsoil, we no longer found crystals. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> amazing. And here's the other one I found. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, I told you. <laughs>
This was a very memorable day because today Robert decided he would take us to one of his top secret places to look for Columbine agate. It's not blue, but it's hollow. Yep, little miniature egg geodes. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Isn't pretty? It's not blue, but... Nice agate. Let me show you the blue one. It's got a real pretty one there, though. There you go. Classic Columbine blue. Nice. Cigar smells good. Jersey quartz. It's not really blue. Got the black reorder juice. Nice man. Nice. Looks like I found a flake out here too. Indian artifact flake. This one, it's not blue, but it's got a beautiful band to it. And there's a geode just to the right of that. A little geode to the right. You see it right here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. There's a lot here. little bugs right in the volcanic rock here.
Today, Robert took Richard and I to the Leadville Mining District. And once we were there, it was pretty obvious there had been some serious mining operation going on there. Not quite sure if the camera will pick this up, but uh, as you scan along here, you can see the golden flashes of pyrite all in this, all in this pile here. Let's see if you can spot this one right here. So later I ended up digging about a three foot hole down into the tailings pile and I found a piece of newsprint down there. Unraveling it, I realized that this thing had been somehow preserved for the past 111 years. And here Robert just found the largest pyrite crystal he has ever found at this location. That is amazing! Where in the world did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> totally, nice. Totally crazy. Awesome. And it's, and it's not damaged. To speak of. That's and cool. That's... <laughs> awesome. I Great find. That. So I ripped that off. Rare find. And these are all coming from right here. It was a bonus day for Richard and I, as my friend Daniel Clay escorted us to one of his secret crystal spots. It was a crystallizing vein of quartz, which yielded oh, yeah. crystal plates and sometimes even scepters. All terminations. Looks pretty clear right in there. Uh-huh. Little contacts, but it's, yeah. it's good. You ready to get back in here? Scepter cluster, look at that. <laughs> Congrats, man. That's sweet. It's going, game.